once again. So in this video, I was going to do another intro uh, with kind of just basic setting up of a script, some good common practices to do with them, and a few other little things. So let's go ahead and just jump right into that code. So a good thing to do when you're first um, designing a script, especially if it's one you're going to be publicly sharing or maybe you want to get credit for at your job, it's just to kind of put a comment section at the top of your script with some basic information. You know, the date that it was last modified, uh, changes that have made. This is especially helpful for yourself, just so you can remember, okay, in the last version, here's the things that I made changes to. Maybe even something as simple as I corrected some of my variables to just have better names, whatever. It's a great way to have a change log that just always is in your script versus having it separate in a text file or just trying to remember it in general. You know, author, you know, obviously you want to get credit for what you're doing. Always include anybody that maybe helped you. And then what version you're running. That will also help you keep track of which uh, step you're on and what changes were made. And however you want to set up the versions you can, you can always just do like version two then version three or you can get you know a little bit more detailed with version 3.1 then 3.2 i tend to kind of stick with the three spot uh way of going if it's like a huge update where i'm pretty much changing so much stuff in it i'll change the first digit if it's kind of like you know in the middle you know big update maybe some new functionality was added i'll change here and if it's something really small, like I just had to fix some errors or something, I'll change the end there. Now, a few of these things, uh, they can help you with your script. Adding this uh, stuff, you always want to have at the start of your script so that the settings are made right away versus waiting for a function to be called on. So the first one is no environment. Uh, this avoids checking in empty variables to see if they are environmental uh, variables. This just can help your script be a little bit faster, especially once it starts getting a lot larger. You're not wasting time with all those checks. Uh, the next one we got, this just kind of eliminates warnings of certain types. So that's just uh, the pound sign, warn, all, off. That's good if you're getting sometimes, uh, especially when you're using comms, at least for me, sometimes I'll get an error where it just didn't connect correctly. But that's just probably user, you know, error. I just, I use the functionality on the wrong page. If it has like a win activate it, you know, sometimes it'll throw an error saying like could not complete this function. I just turn those off because if I'm not in the right place, I don't want to see that warning every time I accidentally maybe just hit the wrong hotkey or something. Um. Uh, don't always have to put this in your script. This one's one that you can definitely leave out, especially when you're first starting out. But if you do notice an error that you're constantly getting that you're just like, I don't want to see this anymore, go ahead and add this. The next one here um, is single instance force. Basically, that's going to say, like, if I accidentally click on my script or my executable, when it's already running, it's not going to launch two versions running at the same time. So you'll get with that in your code, you'll get something that looks like this. So I already have always on top running, but if I double click that again, that's what this is going to uh, give me. As you see, see single instance. That's just saying, hey, you're you're already running this program. Are you sure you want to go ahead and have it shut down the other one and launch this one? If you push yes, it just replaces it. If you push no, then that one just doesn't launch a second time. Uh, without this in your code, you could potentially run, you know, however many of that executable as you want. You don't really want that. A uh, good thing with auto hotkeys, though, in case you do forget this in your script or just don't have it in there for some reason, if you run even like two separate programs uh, or scripts. When you launch one first and then launch a second one, if they share the same hotkey for a function, whatever the uh, newest one you launched is going to be the one 
that takes that F1 key and sends there. So it'll basically turn off the F1 hotkey on the first one you launched. So that way, if you push F1, it's not trying to perform two functions in two different scripts at the same time. So that's something good to know. Send input mode. Um, by default, this is send event for all your sends. You can change the uh, mode to you know all the different kind of sends there are out there. You know, send play, send input. Send input usually is the one people mostly go to. And that just means that any time during your script you have a send, it's going to use that type of send uh, input or play or event. Depending on what you're really trying to do or what kind of send you like using, that's up to you. So you just change this uh, second part here. Uh, changes the script's current working directory, set working directory, uh, with the built-in variable there, a script directory. That's basically just going to say, you know, anything with file paths or anything like that where you're trying to call upon an INI file, a text document, what have you. It's going to assume that unless you actually put, like, in that file read, the working, uh, like, the full path, it's going to go from wherever you launch that program. So if I had that in, you know, a code for one of my executables here on my desktop and try to call upon an INI file, it's going to assume that it's also on the desktop or within a folder of where you first launched. Obviously, you don't have to use the built-in variable. You can always define a path here. Uh, it could always be, you know, like your documents, what have you. It just makes it easier for coding. Uh, that way, if there are a bunch of like different pro, uh, files or whatever you're trying to call upon and then maybe at some point you move that folder where that executable and INI files are maybe you move them from your desktop to your documents you're not going to have to go back into your code and sit there and have to change all the file paths throughout your code and hope you don't miss one you'll just have to change it in this one spot and then it'll become universal through your whole script so it's a good time saver this one I use a lot too, uh, string case sense, uh, turn it off, or you can change this to be on, by default is it on, and that's just saying that, especially when you're doing something with like a variable, it's going to be case sensitive, or it's not going to care if it's not correct as far as case capitalization or lowercase goes. So an example of that would be an if function here. So if I have a variable set to all caps TTT, if variable equals lowercase ttt if this was on this if would not hit because technically those are different but if i turn it off it's going to assume that okay as long as it's ttt regardless of capitalization or lowercase go ahead and hit this so i like to turn those off just because i'm not getting that very specific with my strings or variables so as long as it matches as far as letter or number go go ahead and just be true. Now another cool one here is the file select file. A lot of times uh, if you're calling upon like an INI file or file read like I have down here, you'll hard code that information in, but if you're going to be giving your script out to a whole bunch of people and they you know, might not have the same file structure as your computer, especially if they're on like a different OS, or maybe they don't have that specific file that you need to read or that INI file to read, or they just want to save it to wherever they want. This gives them the opportunity to basically choose that. So what they're going to do is select file. That's going to be the variable, which is going to store the file path. Obviously, you can change this to the name of whatever you want. Uh, for here, there's a few little options here that you can do. I'm just leaving those blank. Uh, open a file, and then text documents, and that's just the title right there. And then you can also here, you can delete this or add it if you want a specific uh, type of document they're trying to find. You know, if they're trying to find a text document or a document uh, with those uh, endings there. Or you can, you know, change this to like .ini, what have you. And then putting that little asterisk, the star there, that just is a wild card, meaning that the title can be whatever as long as it ends with 
text or doc at the end as the uh, file type there. And what that's going to do is that's just going to pop up one of these. They can then navigate to whatever they need, whether they're uploading or saving. You know, double click on that file, and it's going to save that path here. And then later in your script, you can always do a file read with the user's uh, pick location and document type for you. And here's a breakdown of just what kind of each spot means. Uh, you know, obviously the file select file there, whatever you want your output variable to be, uh, your options, and your options you can uh, read. I actually got the HK page here for this pulled up. And you got a lot of different types of things you can do there. Uh, if you want to be able to have them select multiple targets, you can. Uh, there's a few. File must exist. Path must exist. A lot of little different options depending, but I usually leave those blank. I, I don't really ever have much of a need for those. And then just your root directory, your file name, you know, maybe where you want that menu right here. Uh, where is it? There we go. Just where you want this maybe to default to. Do you want it to start in documents? Do you want to start on desktop? Whatever. You can leave that blank or just put in something random there. The title, you know, that's just going to be whatever's up here. You know, text documents saying, hey, that's what you're looking for. And then whatever your filter is going to be. And that's just going to change so that only the files with those extensions are showing. If you leave this blank, or I mean just delete it in general, it'll just show all files in that open uh, dialog there for Explorer. And as always, I'm going to put all this code, copy it down into the description below. Now a few other things, these are kind of more like housekeeping things. If you're doing a small script, you don't really need to do this, but a lot of times I'm doing some pretty large scripts and this is very helpful for organization and just finding stuff faster. Um, so I put this at the start of my script um, after I do all the settings here and I just kind of make categories. So, you know, my first function is going to be here. My second function is going to be here. And the cool thing about this is you can just double click control F and I can push find next and it's going to automatically jump me down to where I need to be. So yeah, let's try to scroll up so I can see that a little better. Control F, find next, boom. I'm already at that function. So it's kind of like a table of contents. Like I said, little scripts, maybe not as useful, but I've done some scripts where there's a lot of functionality. It's getting, you know, to be thousands of lines long. And this just helps me find stuff better versus having to scroll down, trying to remember where that specific function is that maybe I need to fix or I want to add or delete, what have you. So it's really good. It also makes each function break up a little bit nicer so it's easy to tell where one starts and one ends in your code. And you just basically just comm it out with a semicolon, a bunch of dashes. I've seen people do equal signs here instead. You know, that adds a little bit more of a kind of like a bold look to it. So that's whatever you want to do. I've even seen people just do a whole row of like uh, hashtags in those. Kind of like that. But yeah, whatever looks best to you. But it's definitely a great way to organize your code. So another thing is, uh, we'll just call this ugly code. Basically code that's not really formatted. So as you can see with this little sample that I made, everything's pretty much against the wall here. There's no tabbing or anything. It, it, I mean, there's really no rule out there saying how you have to format it. I mean, there's kind of like standards of what people hope you do, but it's really up to you. You know, I've seen people who, when they do, um, you know, stuff like an if, they just do a tab. Uh, there's some people there who like to do it with four spaces. So one, two, three, four. And that's pretty much a tab anyway. Everybody has their own thing. I kind of stick with just doing simple tabs. Now with this uh, little short segment here, this is pretty easy to clean up myself. But once again, if you have a really long script, you don't like it, or somebody just did it and you want to clean up their code, there's actually some cool websites out there 
Um, I'll link the one I'm about to use in the description below also, but it's called Prettify. So, beautifying your code, prettifying your code, I've heard it, you know, it's mentioned both ways. But basically, we're going to copy that. Jump over here. So here's this website. It's a long thing, so I won't read it out. I'll just post it down in the description. And you're just going to put your source code up here. And um, for me, I'm, I, I have this check marked tab for indent, because like I said, I like to just use the tabs. You can also change the size if you want. And then once you're ready, all you got to do is push Prettify. And there you go. So you get two options here. You get kind of like the uh, notepad looking version there. But then you also kind of get like your editor looking version there. So, and then all you can do is just copy that over and be like, all right, boom, that looks so much better. So that's helpful when you have just a whole bunch of code and you don't feel like having to go line by line, making sure that it's, you know, laid out correctly. This is definitely something I've used multiple times, especially when I'm trying to help someone who's pretty new to coding. They don't know about how to end it and all that kind of stuff, so their code ends up looking a lot like this. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. Make sure you subscribe. One other thing I wanted to throw out there that I'm just kind of testing the grounds out for the fun of it is I created a little shirt store for my channel just out of curiosity see i kind of wanted to buy some of these shirts for myself and then i was like eh let me share see if anybody else is interested but you got a few options on here which is some fun hk and coding kind of stuff in general if you guys want to check that out that'll also be in the description below yeah it's a really cool website you know just some fun shirts you know if everything goes well i definitely plan to make more uh down the line kind of rotating them through here and there all right, if you guys had any questions on any of the stuff I went over today or want to see any kind of more details on any of these, definitely comment below, let me know, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.